folks! At the end of the previous episode, I mentioned how I consider Super Mario Bros. 2 to be the true follow-up to the first Mario game. And some of y'all have asked why. Well, the reason I said that is because not only do I consider this an overall better game than Lost Levels, but I'm also of the opinion that this game is the one that truly progressed the series. Really? I figured that there were more people that liked Mario 2 over Lost Levels. I suppose you're right. Anyway, like its predecessor, Mario Bros. 2 has an intriguing tale of its own. So, let me show y'all this game's story. It's the way I've been reviewing since the start, Shasta, so you better get used to it because I ain't changing. Unless I can't find anything whilst doing research. No. No! The answer is no, and that's final, Shasta. Just own it! As some of you folks already know, Super Mario Bros. 2 happens to be a reskinned and repackaged version of a Famicom Disk System game called Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. And before you ask, yes, I will review this game in the future. But what some of you may not know is that Doki Doki Panic was actually intended to be a Mario game originally. But that story is for another time. As I mentioned in my review of Lost Levels, the execs at Nintendo of America had deemed that game too similar to the first Super Mario Bros. and halted its release in the US. But Nintendo needed something to give to their American as well as European consumers. It was 1988, and even though Nintendo had quite a few spectacular games to their name by this time, Sega was starting to gain not only as a noteworthy competitor, but also as a sound alternative. Nintendo came up with the brilliant idea to revert Doki Doki Panic back to being a Mario game. They would leave in the main villain plus the bad guys that you would fight, and they also left in most, if not all, of the music tracks that were in Doki Doki Panic originally. The only true major difference between Mario 2 and Doki Doki Panic would be the swapping of the main playable characters. Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach would be the new star attractions of this game. But one thing that the devs did keep in from Doki Doki Panic were the abilities of those original characters. I'll be going over that feature soon enough. It's actually an integral feature of Super Mario Bros. 2. Since Nintendo was practically building on what was already a finished product, it didn't take long for the game to be made. And so on October 9th, 1988, Super Mario Bros. 2 was released to the world and it was a commercial, as well as financial, success. It was just a great, great game. But how great was it? Well, allow me to show y'all. One of the really great things right off the bat about Super Mario Bros. 2 is that it has a really good story. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the story in this game is better than in the previous titles. The story is as follows. One night, Mario has an unusual dream where he finds himself walking up a fairly long staircase. Upon reaching the end of the stairs, he discovers a door and opens it. What he sees inside mesmerizes him, for it was nothing as he had ever seen before. But before Mario could venture into this new realm, he awakens to discover that it was all a dream. The next morning, while meeting up with Luigi, Toad, and Peach, Mario tells the gang of his fantastic dream. After hearing his tale, Luigi, Toad, and Peach stand in shock, as they too had the same vision the previous night. 
Just then, Mario and crew discover a cave and decide to investigate it. Inside, they discover a long staircase, just like the one from their dream. After ascending it, they reach a door and open it, only to discover the very same world that they had all seen last night. After entering into this strange new land, Mario and company meet up with one of the inhabitants called a Moo, aka these guys. The Moo goes on to tell Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach that his home, Subcon, is being destroyed by the evil King Wart, aka this guy, and that only they can put an end to his evil deeds. Upon hearing this, Mario and gang decide to faithfully take on the quest of stopping the villainous King Wart. After going through the world of Subcon and besting Wart's forces, the heroes finally face off against the dastardly monarch. After defeating Wart, Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach are hailed as heroes and saviors of Subcon, only to find out that their grand adventure was little more than a mere dream. Or was it? Wow. What a plot! And it goes to show that the guys that were working on this game wanted to go a little above what was given as a story in the last two Mario titles. But it's the gameplay in Mario 2 that really sets it apart from other games in the Mario franchise. One of the really awesome features in Mario 2 is the option to play not only as Mario, but also as Luigi, Toad, and Peach. And what's more is that each of these four characters have their own unique attributes. I like that. That's Nintendo using their noggin. They could have just as easily made Mario and company have the same traits and they only would have made them superficially different. But no, Nintendo went a step further and gave these characters different aspects depending on who you chose. For example, Mario is the most balanced out of the four playable characters, though he does tend to have better speed than the other three. Luigi returns with his lost levels powers, i.e. he has the best jump and the worst traction out of all the rest of the team. I guess bacon grease is really hard to get off shoes. I should note that since I played as Luigi in Lost Levels, I've decided to play as him again throughout this game too. And some of y'all are probably wondering why I'm doing that. Well, in my humblest opinion, Lost Levels and Mario 2 were more centered on Luigi than they were on Mario. It just seems, to me at least, that these two games were geared towards you playing specifically as Luigi. So, yeah. Anyway, the next playable character is the infamous jerk ball himself, Toad. Though, to be fair, I can't really knock him too much. He is the second slowest character to choose, and he has the second worst jump, but he does have one trick up his sleeve, and that's his strength. Toad can pick up objects much quicker than any of the other three characters can, and that can come in handy if you're up against a formidable boss. Lastly, we have Her Highness Princess Peach. Ooh, what can I say about Peach? Well, she has the worst jump, the weakest strength, and she's the slowest out of the four characters. So, why would you ever want to play as her? Well, it turns out that she can actually fly, for a few seconds anyway. And believe it or not, that stun of hers may actually be needed in some of the later levels. Having the option to play as different characters is awesome. Not many games back during the third generation did that, and it's cool to see this feature in one of Nintendo's IPs. Mario 2 is probably better known for how it introduced a new way to play a Mario game. In fact, it was never redone for some reason. Unlike in many other classic Mario games, you don't stomp on enemies to kill them. Instead, you pick up assorted items or enemies off the ground and chuck them at the nearest baddie. 
There are some people that don't like this mechanic, and thus they're not too fond of the game. But I really like it. I think it adds to the new style of this Mario title. Another feature in Mario 2 is that you now have a health meter. You initially have only two hits before your character dies. However, if you pull one of these beakers up from the ground and toss it, you can enter into what is known as subspace. There, you can find these mushrooms that'll reward you an additional health slot. You can even pick up coins in these areas to use in the slot machines at the end of each level to gain more lives. The star power-up even makes a return in Mario 2. Acquiring one is actually pretty damn easy. Instead of pulling one up from the dirt, all you gotta do is collect these cherries scattered throughout some of the levels. Collect five cherries and the star power-up appears. One other new feature in Mario 2 is the lack of a time counter, meaning that you're free to explore Subcon to your heart's content. And if there's one thing that I love in a platformer, it's the ability to delve into and get immersed in its world. In addition to a new gameplay style, Mario 2 also introduced new enemies, new bosses, and a completely different antagonist. Unlike in Lost Levels where the devs decided to just recycle enemies and Bowser clones, Mario 2 gives us a new lineup of bad guys to fight. The enemies that you come across in Subcon are pretty cool to me. Four enemies in particular would see returns in numerous Mario games to follow. Those included are the Shy Guys, which I think were inspired by Jason Voorhees. I mean, come on, look at him. How could you not make that comparison? Next we have the Sniffits, and in all honesty, these dudes are just Shy Guys that happen to shoot little mini cannonballs out of their mouths. Coming up thirdly, we have the Babombs. You could basically call these guys the Suicide Bombers of Mario enemies, for obvious reasons. Finally, we have Pokey, a happy little cacti monster that's slow to move, but pretty tough. You have to throw an enemy or an item at each of his sections, or he won't die completely. There are also 14 other baddies to fight. Unfortunately, though, almost all of them didn't make any more than a cameo appearance in later Mario games. But what Mario game would be complete without a few bosses to face off against? Actually, <laughs> we'll get to those eventually. Mario 2 has quite a unique lineup of bosses, one of which would go on to make appearances in future Nintendo games. I am of course talking about Birdo, this weird pink female dinosaur thing. You could say that she's a bit of a co-star in Mario 2, because she's in almost every level. Birdo is a boss, but I use that term loosely because she's much weaker compared to the bigger bosses that you'll face. The real bosses that you'll come across include Mouser, a shades-wearing rodent with a bomb fetish, Triclyde, a three-headed giant snake that spits flames, Fry Guy, a literal ball of fire whom turns into several smaller balls of fire once he's hit enough times, Claw Grip, a giant crab that uses rocks to attack, and finally, the big bad main antagonist himself, King Wart, whose only method of attack is a beam of bubbles. Kinda pathetic. Though he does take more hits than the other bosses to defeat, so I can at least say that he's more durable. These bosses are not exactly what I would call challenging, but they were designed nice. I'm actually kind of surprised that some of these bosses didn't make reappearance in subsequent Mario titles, especially Wart. I can actually see him as a potential reoccurring villain for future Wario games. You're telling me. They haven't made a platformer Wario game in almost 10 years. Hopefully, eventually, the 3DS or Switch get a title. Like in many video games, the music in Mario 2 plays an intricate part in the experience. 
The tunes in this game, much like in Mario 1 and Lost Levels, are really happy and upbeat. The game itself is very colorful, both aesthetically and emotionally. And the music not only emphasizes that fact, but it also represents it. The tunes just fit perfectly for Mario 2. It's the kind of stuff that puts you in a good mood. Kind of like listening to a rock song from the 50s or 60s, or maybe even a Motown song from the 70s. Actually, now that I say that, the music does kind of give off that Motown vibe. But I ain't complaining. I actually like Motown music. Another little interesting feature when it comes to the tunes is that they included two redone tracks from the first Mario Brothers. One was put into the intro screen, and the other was used in the subspace areas. I like it when devs do that. To me, it's a sign of their passion for making games. One thing that I mentioned in my review for Lost Levels is that that game started off difficult from the get-go. Fortunately for Mario 2, we've seen a return to Mario 1's formula of difficulty in increments, rather than starting off with Dark Souls' levels of hardness. There are some people out there that give this game flack for being too easy, and to that I ask, have you honestly ever played an NES game that is easy? I mean, I know that there are some people out there that are really, really freaking talented, and they're NES masters, pretty much. But I doubt many NES masters would call Mario 2 an easy game. I mean, sure, it's easier compared to the Lost Levels, but so are many other NES games. Anyway, I think it's good that Mario 2 presents its challenge in increments rather than jumping the gun and going straight to kicking you in the balls in terms of game difficulty. Personally, I like this formula the most when it comes to a game presenting its challenge. The first three levels are quite a breeze to go through, and they should be. Whenever you start a game, the first few levels or so should be more on the simple side for you to get your bearings. Mario 2 does get harder the more you progress, that's for damn sure. The further you go in this game, the more complex the levels become. Especially the final level. That's a freaking gauntlet. So, in terms of game challenge, I would say that Mario 2 is just right. But I should warn y'all that unlike in Mario 1 and Lost Levels, you don't have infinite continues. You have, and can only have, two continues in this game, and once they're gone, it's back to level numero uno for you. And like I said, the game gets tougher the more you advance, so be wary of that. Also, there's no save feature, just thought I might mention that too. Alright, so... In playing this game, I found that it has a good story, colorful and detailed graphics, a new and interesting lineup of bad guys, nice music, and fun gameplay. So is there anything negative that can be said about Mario 2? Yes, but very, very little. I need to mention this because if I don't, then people will tell me in the comments section that I'm a horrible reviewer. But let it be known that I don't personally consider this a negative aspect of the game. When it comes down to it, Mario 2 is just a reskin of Doki Doki Panic with Mario characters. But as I mentioned before as I was going over the history of Mario 2's development, Doki Doki Panic was originally intended to be a Mario game in the first place. So this isn't a bad thing. I do have one little nitpick about this game though, and that's the fact that it's kinda short. It's only about 20 stages long. Compare that to the 32 stages in Mario 1, and the 36 stages in Lost Levels. 88 stages if you were masochistic enough to uncover the super secret four worlds of that game. I think that they should have added a few more levels, but that's just my opinion. But then we have the actual issue with Mario 2, and that's Birdo. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Birdo as a character and all, but you face her so many fucking times that it can and will become monotonous. The devs tried to remedy this by giving Birdo different abilities the further you got in the game, but still, you face her way more often than you should. But other than all that, Mario 2 is a solid game. It was something new and inventive and it gave players a whole new experience. I believe that this game has earned its spot in the line of good Mario games. And hey, 
If it wasn't good, then why did it get a full 16-bit makeover in Super Mario All-Stars? I would say that Mario 2 was refined a bit when it came to that game. But probably the best version of Mario 2 by far is the Game Boy Advance game, Super Mario Advance, with voiceover work, 32-bit graphics, and a new gameplay mode. But I'll be covering this game for another time. So in conclusion, I decided to award Super Mario Bros. 2 with an E for excellent. This game was, in my opinion, the true follow-up to Mario 1, and was thus a true progression in the series. But, as I found out via Shasta, I'm in the minority when it comes to holding this particular opinion. There are some people that really don't like Mario 2, and they're not afraid to express it. So, I've asked my good old partner in crime, Dylan D. Labs Tomasi, to give his opinion on Mario 2. Alrighty, Dylan, you're on. Hello everybody, it's D-Labs here to review Super Mario 2, and I'm gonna come out and say it, this game is a fucking imposter. It walks around with all its color, and its Mario, and its peaches, and all its bullshit, but it's not a real Super Mario game. I'm sure if you saw the beginning of this video, Redneck talked all about how this game came to be, and it's a fucking fraud. Now, I'm not just saying this now, I honestly always thought this. When I was a kid, and I played this game for the first time, I always thought there's something wrong with it. It just didn't seem like a real Mario game. It was like Mario on acid or crack. It wasn't until a few years ago that I realized why this game is so unusual. And that kind of pissed me off even more. There's two reasons why that pisses me off. One is that Nintendo pretty much scrambled and pulled out of their ass one of the weirdest and stupidest Super Mario games probably ever. And two, the original game this was supposed to be pretty much was ripped out of the fucking whoever's hands and made into a Super Mario game probably without his wishes. I'm pretty sure he was super pissed. That's like telling the guy who made Metal Gear Solid that we're gonna change your game to Grand Theft Auto. I'm sure he was like, sweet, thanks. I would like to see what the original game would have been about. I would have played the original whatever the hell this was. I, I don't know the name of it. I can't remember. Sorry. And realistically, Super Mario 3 was my first kind of encounter with Mario. So I, I felt when I played this, it just didn't make sense to me. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the gameplay and what I kind of do like about the game. Let's start with the menu screen. I like the menu screen because if you wait there, it'll eventually click over to a story. Now, I like when games try to add stories, even something as simple as Mario. Another thing that's pretty cool is that there's four different characters to choose from. There's Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toadstool. Each one kind of controls a little different and has their own unique abilities. But then again, when I play this now, all I can think about is who were these characters originally, and why did they act like that? When I first started playing this, I kind of thought I'd be a Mario guy. No, but or a Luigi guy, but I end up using Princess Peach probably the most because her little float ability and it made it a little easier to get through the levels. The first thing you see is when you enter this world is you're on top of a, like a mountain and you jump off and you can go through the walls which takes you to the other side of the wall kind of loops you back and forth. Doing that and seeing how big and colorful the characters were is what made me realize there's something not right about this Mario game. It didn't feel like a real Mario game. It's like Legend of Zelda was top down, and then Legend of Zelda 2 was a side scroller. It doesn't look like the same game. It, it feels like I don't think anyone asked for a side scrolling Zelda game. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted more of the original. Realistically, I think this is the worst of all the Mario games. And I haven't played them all, but the ones I have played, this is the least fun. But that's probably because I'm totally fucking jaded. Is because I think Super Mario 3 is the best Mario game ever. Even though I haven't played it in like, eh, probably 10 years. So who knows what I'll think when I start playing that or reviewing that for Redneck if he asks me. And there's probably no point in me really talking about the gameplay because I bet Redneck covered that well and the music, I wouldn't be surprised. I thought playing this game would kind of be a treat, but I felt like a chore. 
But also, I am playing this on my cell phone. I don't have a, a, a Nintendo or an emulated Nintendo to fucking play this with, or a controller. Maybe that, maybe that would make things a little nicer and funner to play. I'm going to give this Mario game a 3. I just don't like Nintendo's practice of taking other people's products and converting them into a Mario game. And the fact that I know this now makes me hate the game even more. Alright, Redneck, sorry I didn't get into too much gameplay and this and that, but normally you do that stuff. Wow, that kind of sounds like I'm a big fucking hater of Mario. Maybe I am. I don't know. Check out the first Super Mario. You should check out Redneck's first review of Super Mario. I didn't bash that too much, and even Mario himself made an appearance, which is pretty cool. So, thank you very much, Redneck, for letting me help you with this review, and please, let me get back here when you do part three. Thanks, Dylan. I appreciate your counterpoint for this episode. And, uh, don't worry. I'll make sure to ask you for your help when I get around to reviewing Mario 3. Nah, I've had enough Mario games for one season. I think it's time for me to review something... A little more speedy and blue. Well, people, it's time to part ways. But be sure to tune in next time for another little video game excursion starring me and Shasta. Goodbye, folks. And y'all come back now, alright? <laughs>